Common sense is something that's becoming less and less common in today's world. Just look at the full-scale guy who made a six-wheeled Cessna. This beast has all the downsides of both tail draggers and tricycle gear with the useful load of a caveman with a toothbrush. Occurrences that just make you throw your hands up and say, what were they thinking, are quite common in the RC world as well. For example, look at the buffoon who thought it'd be a great idea to let his squirrel fly his RC airplane. No! While some of these examples may seem outlandish, you will be surprised at what might be frowned upon or even highly encouraged at an RC field, unless you're a seasoned regular. So, in order to help the new RC pilots out there, we threw together a guide on how to not make your field's Sunday flyers grumpy with the unwritten rules of flying RC. Without wasting any more time, let's forge slip right into the first group of rules on our list, RC airfield etiquette. The RC flying community has a great reputation for being a welcoming and helpful group, especially to new pilots. Let's keep that alive and well. Next time you show up to the field, make sure to offer to help Chuck over there who clearly appears to be about to fly a plane with reversed ailerons. Sometimes, the fate of someone who's new to the hobby lies in your hands. On that same token, just be sure to be diplomatic in how you give the advice in the first place. Over the years I've heard you talk I'm glad you did. Walking up to Chuck with the reverse ailerons and saying, hey, idiot, your plane is going to crash, is guaranteed to make Chuck walk away from the hobby faster than a Reno Air Racer. On the flip side, if you are the new guy, never be afraid to ask for help, especially if you're worried you may be putting people at risk. Another good rule of field etiquette to follow is, before you complain about how the runway's grass is too tall for your plane with quarter inch tires, consider offering to volunteer. RC fields run entirely on community service. Maybe the runway is long because no one is willing to volunteer to mow the grass in the first place. Volunteering for an RC club is a great rewarding experience. Another common form of etiquette at your RC field is that when it comes to field rules, it's important to not be the self-proclaimed field police officer. Just because pattern flying Joe over there didn't announce his landing, which by the way, definitely try to make clear calls when you're flying to avoid a crazy runway incursion in the first place, doesn't mean someone almost got killed. RC flying isn't as regimented as full scale, which is part of why it's so fun. If you do come across someone who did blatantly break a rule that actually did put people in danger, for example, maybe they flew so low through the pits that everyone got a haircut, definitely approach them calmly. Compliment sandwiches exist for a reason. Hey, uh, can I fly your plane? Wait, what? Did he really just ask that? Okay, shameless plug. I was totally guilty of this one as that annoying but passionate 10 year old who just wanted to fly anything that had wings on it when I got into the hobby. Passion's great, but if someone tells you no, don't keep asking to fly their airplane. Over time, once you prove you can fly things safely and proficiently without crashing, you may end up finding people want your help flying their planes anyways. On that note though, if you're going to fly someone else's airplane, try not to live by the fly it like you stole it mentality. Be respectful. That's it for the unwritten rules on RC field etiquette. Let's make a skidding turn into the unwritten rules of operating your RC airplane. The next time you go to fly, if the wind at your field is opposite of where it normally blows, or is a direct crosswind at the same velocity as that recent hurricane in Florida, consider staying on the ground. Don't be the guy who flies the opposite pattern against all other traffic, nearly hitting everyone and landing downwind because you weren't comfortable flying right to left in the first place. Know your limitations. Another rule on flying in the patterns to make sure you fly a predictable pattern. We get it. How can you fly a predictable pattern with a 3D airplane or heli? You can't. And that's okay. Just communicate with everyone before you go up if you plan to not fly predictably. Another unwritten rule of RC flying is to be careful flying in areas like small parks. Know your skill set and be a good neighbor. It probably wouldn't be a good idea to land on your neighbor's roof at 7 a.m. Finally, don't crash. Okay, we're only kind of serious about this one. The serious side we want to cover about crashing is to simply accept responsibility. Don't blame it on the wind, your radio, or 5G antennas. Ultimately, your plane flipped over on landing because you didn't cross control and correct for the wind, among many other actual real reasons. The wind didn't blow you over as a personal insult. Also, as we mentioned in an earlier video, crashing does actually teach you a lot. Sometimes, when I try flying in new confined places or in new ways, I end up crashing as well. Many times, really. It's how you get better. Have you ever heard of the saying, build, fly, crash, and repeat? We really think this should actually be build, experiment, crash, learn, repeat. Learning is what's most important after any flight. That's it for the unwritten rules of operating your RC plane. Now, let's move on to flying scale RC airplanes and their set of unwritten rules. Before watching your buddy's giant scale P-47 get airborne, let's discuss what not to do while you look in awe at how awesome it looks on the ground. As with approaching a pet bear, Ask permission before petting someone's airplane. Let me give you an analogy that my good friend Scott once told me. The last time you were at a car show, you probably saw those parents over there lecturing their kid about how they shouldn't touch that beautifully restored car. 
changing things up at the last air show you were at. Those same parents were allowing their kid to hop all over George's gorgeous Mooney, who proceeded to yell them away from his airplane. The point here is that not everyone wants their balsa touched. Always ask before petting your local warbird. Another favorite unwritten rule around any scale RC airplane is avoiding being the armchair scale judge. Hey, uh, according to my calculations, that F-104's ailerons are a lot bigger than the real one. RC airplanes can't ever be a perfect version of their full-scale counterparts, because after all, you can't scale air down. It's always the same size. Keep your critical comments to yourself, unless you are a scale judge, at a legit competition or meetup. Here's the P-47 with the scale speed pass. Sounds legit, right? Well, according to our resident, not armchair engineer, Real Deal Woody, that low pass was actually a lot faster than a true scale speed. All right, Woody, tell us what a scale speed flyby would actually look like and what it would take to do that with an RC airplane. We're talking about scale speed. What happens when you shrink a thing down? Cruise ship effect. Big things appear slow. Small things seem like they're going faster. RC planes already look like they're going fast. How do we make them look like they're not going too fast? We need to bring that stall speed down. So how do we do that? Jeopardy music. There's a lot of math to this, but you gotta build your freaking airplane light. Ever heard of it? Did I blow your mind? Airplanes fly better when they're light. You heard it here first, folks. And that's all I have to say. Thanks, Woody. That's it for the unwritten rules of scale RC flying. We've got two more topics for you folks today. The first is the unwritten rules of 3D flying. 3D flying, with both RC airplanes and helicopters, is probably the most unique and fun flying out there. This is primarily because new maneuvers are made up all the time, and it's always things you'd never seen or even heard of, and even good old Bob Hoover couldn't have done it either. When was the last time you saw a full-scale P-51 have a 2 to 1 power to weight ratio? See what we mean? It's pretty legit and inspiring. However, before you go to the flight line to perform your 3D routine at your field's next air show that's open to the public, consider this great unwritten tip, the 80% rule. No, not a flat B average in college. Fly your airplane to 80% of your actual skill level. When the adrenaline starts pumping, your ability to do that torque roll an inch off the ground that you just recently learned how to do will generally magically vanish. Should you try to do it in the air show, you'll likely end up making the infamous walk of shame out to a pile of scrap wood. The other unwritten rule of 3D flying is to simply be good at sharing airspace. Don't be the guy that goes to fly with their 3D airplane or helicopter, takes off, and goes right into a hover low over the runway while four other people are doing touch and go patterns. Simply communicate before going out or wait until the touch and go gang has finished bouncing off the runway. Sharing the airspace really does work. FBI, open up! 3D flying is not a crime. And now, onto our final topic, the unwritten rules of flying first-person view, which is also known in acronym land as FPV flying. FPV is extremely fun because it allows you to truly feel like you're in the cockpit of your airplane and fly it from the pilot seat. As with real airplanes, it's important to take precautions and be safe doing so. For example, don't try flying your FPV plane in instrument conditions through that low cloud layer. You may end up crashing into the full-scale plane right above you that you can't even see. Another unwritten rule of FPV is to be sure to check everyone else's video frequency before turning on your video transmitter. Imagine flying your full-scale plane and having everything outside the window essentially go black. That's what it's like for Frank over there, who you just shot out of the sky by jamming his video signal. Finally, try your best to avoid chasing Joe's scale Warburg with your freestyle FPV quadcopter without having talked to him beforehand. No one wants an unsolicited vertical stabilizer haircut. If there's only one thing that you take away from this video, let it be this. Use your common sense at any RC flying field and communicate. If you have to ask yourself, will this make someone angry, then the answer is probably, yes, it will. So, next time, look before you leap, or before you fly. It will ensure your club president enjoys your company. Anyways, that's all we got for this video. If you enjoyed it, why not slap that like button, and maybe go ahead and even tap that red subscribe button. Turn on alerts. It doesn't bite. We promise. We'll see you back here again next week with a new upload. Enjoy your day.